Matt. The floor is yours, my friend. Thanks, girl. Hey, good morning, everyone. Oh, I got to uh, confirm that it's being recorded again. There we go. Um, hey, thanks for having me on again. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I haven't been around much lately. The last two weeks have been absolutely brutal. I was closing out um, my new constructions with a build partner. And um, fun fact, lenders, although their only job is to track the money they give you and the insurance you acquire, they don't always have it right. So uh, make sure you keep your own numbers and your business and your investments and anything else you're doing because a lender tried to charge me an additional $65,000 over what they loaned us. And that's a, uh, it's not a small amount of money to have to do as a, as a small time investor. So, <laughs> um, all right, awesome. So the RP, RPR plat was a two lab. I saw you, I saw you, uh, your face reaction looked like I was too loud. All right, so the RPR platform. There's two ways to access this, guys. Either directly through their site, or you can normally do it through your MLS. And when you do it through your MLS system, I'll show you. And that's how I'm. I'm. I'm in a, obviously in a different MLS than most people. But what you do is you're going to go in and yeah, okay. Just make sure I can share my screen. So let me get it open. And then um, I'll show y'all. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Let me hide uh, Tiffany, Tom, and Claire over here. All right, there we go. All right, so when I'm in my uh, system, you can obviously create your bookmarks and everything up top. But the RPR system I have over here in my more, so these are all the bookmarks I've saved and all the MLSs have this. It'll be somewhere over here in the menu tab and you go in and you star everything that you want in your bookmarks. So this is how I pull mine up. And the reason I pull mine up this way is just because it's already logged in and linked. There's also an app you can use on your phone. And I have the app on my phone um, because when I'm on a property and I'll show you, Oops, all right, that was a report I was doing the other day. So now you can see when there's a report done. All right, so um, the reason I keep this app up on my phone is what you can do is over here on the left, and when you log in, this is tied to your MLS, you can see all of your listings and your past listings. And so I always use these for, um, for how I figure out what my list price is gonna be. And I'll show you guys that in a little bit. And I present it in all my listing appointments. You can do save properties, recent reports. So this is like your homepage, okay? So these are your current or past listings. These are kind of your properties, things you wanna do about it. And then over here on the right is any searches you've recently done. Now reports you do in RPR, they only stay there for 30 days. So after you do them, you wanna make sure that um, you download them and put them into a folder or you know, your Google Drive, because after 30 days, they're gonna be gone, they clear it. So what I'm gonna do is, we're just gonna go through and I'll show you a property I did recently. Um, let me find a good one. Um, sorry, I've been doing a lot of rental properties lately. So trying to find a good one here. All right, so this is this is actually, I did this one as a purchase. So this is a purchase I did, um, and I used this RPR report to, um, <clears throat> um, to actually show the listing agent why, why I was presenting the offer that I was, what I was doing. Sorry, I was just looking at one of the questions real quick. I'll get back to that multifamily question here in a second. Oops, sorry, guys. Uh, which one were you on? This one. So I actually use this as a buyer's one, okay? And what I did with this is, this is one reason I keep it on my phone as well. And this one was twofold. And this became really important down the road because we actually had the appraisal come in low on this one as well. So I was able to use this report and then the comps, which is going to be in the CMA portion up here. 
um, <clears throat> when I did my challenge of the appraisal. So we ended up going from the appraisal being, uh, it was 25,000, 26,000 under contract price to be in 10,000 over contract price. When I presented the, uh, the comps that the appraiser missed uh, within this report and showed them why I did this report. So this actually became incredibly beneficial and saved my buyers having to come out of pocket $26,000 and being in the hole um, and actually having $10,000 in um, equity. So, <clears throat> so what this will do is, and the nice thing about this is, it, it's kind of like um, it, it takes the MLS report and, import, and imports it. And so when you're walking through and you can present this front page, if you want to the buyers, or you can do the MLS report. But one thing I really like about this is you can get all information on the property on this front page. And so I can scroll through, I can see the, and an RVM estimate is kind of like a estimate, but actually real information, if that makes sense. Um, so the same premise is what Zestimate does, but this pulls directly from the MLS um, it pulls most and recent updated information, and it's all based off the MLS report. And the reason you can tell that is all the facts are right here. It'll show the sold date. It shows the MLS listing date, all that. And so the listing ID, and it comes down here, and then it'll show you the RVM estimated range. So this is the estimated range um, on what the properties are in the area. And with that, um, if there's a little eye next to it and you're not sure what something is, it'll give you a quick explanation of it. Um, and the confidence on this one in this range is very high. So I estimated this around 390 to 400 and we were right about where we came in, right? Um, it'll show you the owner. So all the information you need when you're writing up your, your report also is right here. Like you don't have to bounce back and forth between tax records because this pulls from there. So you're gonna have the owner information, you're gonna have all the house facts. And if, and if there's something not right about the house um, based off the MLS or the tax reports, then you can update it right here and fix it. Like sometimes a bedroom will be off or the square footage will be off or a lot dimension. And depending upon where you are, you know, the land can make a big difference. The square footage can make a big difference. Um, like, um, you know, you may want to update some of the terms of it or if it's missing a fireplace or a pool or whatever. And then the nice thing is, too, if there's something else you want to update about this, you can go in and you can add another row to this. So if you want to say, you know, it has a large deck or waterfront or whatever it may be. Um, if you're doing this up as a report for someone, then you can go down here, you can add notes to it, because I email these a lot. Um, I do a lot of these, I work a lot with um, out of town buyers, either military or relocation. And so, uh, so I can go in here and I can add notes for them. And then I send this report as a full summary of the home and, and why I believe we should make the offer that we should make. And it's really beneficial. And I'll show you why in a second. Um, so I can make notes here of the whole property, but I can also go in, I can add photos to it. This is more useful when it's not an MLS listing and we're looking to do a seller report. So I'm presenting it in a, and I'm sorry, guys, I'm going to bounce back and forth <clears throat> between the buyer and seller side, but, and, and this is going to be a lot of information. So, um, I'll post my, my, uh, my email and phone number in the chat. If you guys have uh, questions about this, I can do private training or whatever and send you some other info as well. But this is an incredible tool. So I'm going to bounce back and forth a lot because I use it for both sides. I also use it for my personal um, use as um, an investor doing flips, renovations and holds. But this is where if I'm doing a seller's report and showing up, I show up with this package for a listing presentation. And um, and I'll show you what I do to adjust that when I get to the listing presentation. So this is where you would add a photo. So what I do is I either go into Google and I get like a picture of it, or I find an old picture from the last listing. Um, because remember, I'm not using this as my listing, so I can use the old picture. Um, or I'll ask the owner just to, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I'll ask the owner just to go outside, snap a picture for me and text it over to me. Just you know, everybody has nice phones nowadays. So, hey, just shoot a quick picture for me, send it over to me. 
And then they see that they're a part of the process as well, right? So it kind of builds some rapport right off the bat. They're sending a picture of their house to me. I'm adding it here. And then they're like on the very front page. And you'll see when I do the report, it's a big photo of the, of the house that they sent to me. And they kind of get excited. They're like, oh my God, that's my picture. And it immediately kind of knocks the, um, it immediately kind of knocks down that wall when they see the picture that they took and that they're part of the process. And that's part of the seller. Now, here's the other thing you can do is you can add seller proceeds to this. And it's actually very nicely refined in this to where you can go in, you can ask them. And, and I normally leave this blank and then we try and write it in when we're there. And then I send them a final copy uh, based off of what I do with the title company. And so the seller proceeds, I go in and I do that so that they can see, you know, because a lot of people will just say, well, you know, we, <clears throat> yeah, this is when they get to the commission part and they argue about it. And I say, and I don't ever ask like, what do you want to sell your house for? I always ask people, how much money do you want to make on your house? Because they may be able to sell their house for a lot less and make the same amount of money that they want to make. And so I show them what my price is and they're actually going to make 20 or $30,000 more. And I'm not sure if Christine's on the call, but we did that with her very first listing um, when, when she and I were mentoring, we did that on her very first listing. She ended up selling the house for $60,000, no, $80,000 more than the agent who did a listing presentation right before us. And so imagine she ended up getting them a buy and then just the referrals she's gotten off that, you know, they're like, dude, this, this lady can freaking sell your house and make you a lot of money on it. Um, <clears throat> so that's where you're going to do those three things. Historical records are here. I don't really worry about those too much. You go through, and here's the nice thing that you're not going to get in a lot of the MLS reports because it all depends on what's typed in, <clears throat> but this pulls it um, based off location so and the listing. But you have your school districts here, which a lot of people are asking about and want to see. You have the price change history. You have the AARP livability index, so you can see if it's walkable, what transportation's like, so on and so forth. And then here's the great part. You get how this zip code compares to all the areas. So you can show them, hey, here's the median for this area, um, you know, the 12 months change, the median listing prices, so on and so forth. Down here, you get a quick summary of the interior features. So you're not digging through the writing in the MLS. This breaks it down really quick for you. Here's everything that's part of the house. Here's everything that's public information, what the walls are made of, what type of flooring it is. Um, all the living square footages, the garage, the porch, so on and so forth. Here's some of the exterior stuff that it sits on a canal, it's sewer, there's wood decking, blah, 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 blah. Public information on size, pulled from tax records, and then, um, <clears throat> and then on down. And then when you get down to here, you have your flood zone details. And this pulls from uh, public listings as well. And you can actually see this will go through and this will show you the floodplains. You can click on this and this will build your knowledge on it. And so you can actually educate yourself on the floodplains. It goes down here, it does the owner facts. So you can quickly type up the, um, the uh, um, offer on the contract. And you only have to go into the tax records because here's your parcel number, your legal description, what the zoning is for it, anything that you might need to know. You have your tax records down here. You have the deed records, where they're at, when it was closed, how much it was closed for, so on and so forth. So you can very quickly reference any question a seller is going to have or a buyer is going to have, I'm sorry, right here on the front page of this report. <clears throat> and so I really like to utilize this. I have it on my app. I pull it up. All right. So let's get down to the nitty gritty on it. So you have the history of the area, the history of the house. All right, so you can see sales comps evaluations, everything right in here, okay? So you have charts if you're an analytical person or if your buyer or your seller is an analytical person, you can pull up the charts. Now here's where I like to get rolling. You go into the refined value, okay? So in the refined value, and what I'm gonna do is, now I'll, I'll show it to you guys. I'm not gonna reset it. So in the refined value, this is going to be a summary of whatever you put into it. And so the first thing you want to do with the refined values, and, and one second, I'm going to check the chat and just make sure I don't need to 
um, answering these um, right away. All right, awesome. Thank you, Robert. All right, Edwards, yeah, that's a great, um, that's a great point about the RPR and everything. Um, the reports being incorrect, uh, the, the only stuff that'll be incorrect um, is like the tax records and everything might be incorrect and you might have to go into this um, and do that. But you, that's where I'm going to show you guys with the refined values is it's all based off of what the agent puts in for this stuff. Okay. So you do want to check these and um, uh, check the information on the refined values because it could be, um, it could be incorrect. Um, as far as specific templates, uh, Patricia, I'll show you, um, there's really, I mean, you can create templates, but in the end, um, there's a little part where I'll show you and you can save your specifics. Um, but, but that's the great thing about this is it creates a template for you. Um, for multifamilies, when they show up as single families, Maria, I'd be honest, I haven't had that issue. So I'm really not, um, I'm really not aware of how to direct, how to direct or answer that question, but they have a great, if you click on help over here, if you look at the screen and you click on help, um, there's a live chat and they can walk you through and answer that one. So that's a great way to get that one answered for you. Um, Patricia, as far as everything, you have a profile over here. It pulls directly from your MLS. You can change your picture. You can update your information and you can do specific settings through that. Um, that'll make sure that it prints out nicely. And I'll show you that at the end. Um, so refining the value of the house. <clears throat> All right. So the original estimate of the house, and this is showing the value of it when it came up. Obviously the values dropped because we closed at 380 and the appraisal reports don't go in here, but it actually appraised at 390 for us. Um, so it's going to drop based off of it just closed at 380,000. So that's why that front page showed it as a little lower. Um, but I'll show you why I had it up around here. And, um, and I actually recommended, I didn't show the listing agent this price of 413, but this is like with repairs added in. And so that's where we got that one. And so with this, where I went in and did the refined values, because it was valued higher, that's why this number's showing higher, um, is the, um, and that's what actually helped us in the, um, in the appraisal challenge is showing these values that I had and why I had the values is why it came back up. Now, granted, they still didn't hit it at that 413 value, but it at least got us back above contract price showing that aspect. I feel like if I would have been right at contract price, they would have come in lower. But <clears throat> here's a nice thing. So you have this buy home improvements. So you can go through, and this is the part that I leave blank. Um, what, I, what I ask my sellers is to send me a list of home improvements that they've done and what the price was of the home improvement. And um, if they do that before our meeting, then I add it into here to help with the refined value of the house. If they don't do it before the meeting, then I, I just kind of write it in and then I come back and I refine it within the report. But if, as you can see, this had a new roof in 2019, that was 13 grand. Um, it had a new HVAC in 2020, it had upgraded flooring and it had a new water heater, okay? And then these total costs are either what they paid for it or what I estimated the cost to be. Um, it's a little bit easier for me to estimate costs because I do construction as well and I do um, renovations, but you can also just Google like, you know, cost of this type of flooring or go on to Home Depot, look at a water heater and then Google the label price. It'll, it'll take you 10 minutes. Here's the great thing about this. Okay. I'm not adding 13 grand to this um, based off the value. It automatically prorates it based off the time and the level that was done. So a $13,000 roof in 2019 is prorated at $6,200. Um, the flooring obviously doesn't go down as much, neither does the water heater and the HVAC, but they were also done more recently. So here's where you add those. I keep watching the time, Tiffany, make sure I'm good. I know I talk a lot. Um, so garage door replacements, um, kitchen remodels, bathroom remodels, additions, siding replacement, window replacements, and vinyl or wood, right? Really hope nobody's putting wood windows in anymore in Florida, but you never know. Um, if it's something that doesn't fall into these, then you go to other 
So you add other, you add when it was added, the year and the price. And it's automatic and I'll show you, let's just say bathroom remodel in, uh, let's say they did it in December as a Christmas present of 21. It was $25,000 bathroom remodel. I add that and it's gonna go in and that mid-range bathroom remodel, even though it was just done, is going to add 13500 in this in prorated pricing. And that just shows that's the value you get. And that's based off of like um, when people say the value of return when you do a bathroom or a kitchen, so on and so forth. So I'm going to delete that. <clears throat> and you, if, if you don't like any of this and you don't want to show any of that, you can just reset the whole thing. Now, here's a great one as well. I've gone through... This thing has a 25 year old roof. I know it's not gonna need, it's not gonna get insurance and I need to add a roof. So I add new roof shingle at, you know, $10,000. I know I did 13 before, but $10,000. I add that, that gives me a full improvement price, right? Because that's gonna show, hey, this buyer is immediately gonna need to do $10,000 where it shows the seller, hey, your roof has no life left on it this buyer is going to immediately need to do $10,000. I think we need to reduce your price by this before we put it on the market. So this is a fantastic tool because what it does for both the buyer and the seller, depending upon which side you're working with, is it puts it in front of, instead of you just telling them, it puts it in front of their face in a big red letter. Here's what the buyer, because they have to kind of, even though they want to make as much money as they have, the struggle is to get them to see it. If you were a buyer, would you want to walk into a house and immediately have to drop 10 grand on it? So you have to entice the buyer to make the offer on the house for the price that you're asking, because otherwise they're going to go find a house that doesn't need a new roof. They may love your house, but they don't want to pay that $10,000 for a new roof. If you show them that you put that new roof into your pricing, you're going to have a better selling point of that house. Okay. So we go in right now, we've added 21,000 in value to this house based off of these numbers, not these over here. Okay. And then I'm going to go down and I'm going to refine the value based off of market conditions. And this is where I love this program um, because uh, I can look at the other comps and you can do this here, or you can come back and do it after you see your comps. But um, I know it because I had shown a bunch of others. So if I know the market's hot, I can move this up. If it was just average, this was in November, December. So we were just kind of in a, actually this was October, sorry. So we were just kind of, you know, the market was slow then. Um, it, it was still hot, but as far as the nation goes, it was pretty slow. The exterior was equal. It was all brick homes. The rear interior needed some work. So I bumped this down. I could probably bump this down a little more. So if I bump it down, you see it automatically changes the value of the home's condition down here, all right? Lot size was equal. The view was equal because they were all on a canal preserve and the privacy was equal because they were all on a canal reserve. Now, if all your comps are facing other houses and fenced in yards and you have a waterfront or a preserve review, you're going to bump this privacy up and you're going to bump your view up. And now my house is 14,000 more than the, than, the, um, than the comps. Does that make sense? And you can kind of adjust this based off of where you think it needs to be. All right, so we've gotten our values done. Now we're going to go and we're going to do our CMA, which is where um, we're doing our market analysis based off of comps. Now there's two different ones. So you have this one, the uh, comparative analysis. This is the one you want to do. This sales comparison analysis is more of an appraiser's report. It's really in-depth. Um, but you want to do the um, comparative analysis up here. Here's a nice thing. You get a little summary of it. And this will show you if you're doing it for a buyer to do a, uh, a report of offer. It'll show you how many days it's been in the system, price per square foot, living area, lot size. It's a real quick summary for them. So what I'm going to go do down here, and it should, based off my adjustments on the comp, we added 94 bucks to the price of this house. All right, so... This is where you start to see, I was right in that range what it ended up appraising, right? 390 to 409. So it ended up appraising right at 390. All right, so the comps, obviously I've already added some, but what we're gonna do is you can search over here. Um, and this is when you do, um, I forgot who it was, but when you asked about the multifamily, this is where you can check the multifamily comps 
And then you can just bring it up and show that it is a multifamily complex and you can pick your comps as a multifamily complex. So that might answer your question right there. I'm not sure if you need something a little more detailed, but um, here's where I can design whether I want it to be active, pending, closed, active and under contract, um, and withdrawn, expired. And this all depends on what you're trying to show them. Like sometimes I wanna show a seller who's being kind of a pain in the butt about their, um, about their pricing. Hey, I may pull up expires or withdrawn and say, look, these sat on the market for this long at this price. And they ended up having to expire it because it wouldn't sell, all right? This is where you can adjust last six months, three months, depending upon the market. As we get into the spring and summer, you're probably going to want to do three months because the prices are going to jump so fast. In the fall and winter, you can do six months. This is where you adjust the size of it, the bedroom baths um, up to. I would not go more than one room and one bathroom than what it is. So normally what I'll do, I don't really like to go below because it makes it different. Normally when you go one size below, unless it's a four, three, but I don't like to drop down to a two, one on a three, two, just because you get a completely different house with a two, one. But so here I would go uh, three, two up to maybe a four, two. Let's do a four, two, um, just to, for that extra bedroom. You can adjust the price range or do it by square footage or living area, whatever you want. And then if there's specific things you want to compare, like it preserve houses or you know, waterfront or pool or brick only. You can put those in here and you can do up to six keywords and you can add those to your search. And if you're Excuse not getting me, what you want in your search, you just reduce some. Excuse me, Matt. Yes, sir. On on uh, on your living area square footage, um, <clears throat> one of the things that, um, how, do you, how do you do that? I mean, I know appraisers kind of go 20% up, 20% down. I've mm -hmm. kind of found it a good practice to take it down, you know, take the square footage of the house multiply it by 15 and subtract that number just to sort of refine it a little bit more. How do you, yeah. that's kind of what I do. I mean, how do, how do you do that? Um, what's your, what's your thought there? Cause they're not going to use a 3000 square foot home. If it's a 2200 square foot house, that's not going to be a comp. Oh yeah. So I didn't, I didn't really just that. So 20% for that would be 2835. And then it would be like 1895. So that was just something that went in there. But I'll I just so this one I would probably do like I would probably do 1800 to 2800. You know what I mean? Um, just to make it like a little bit of, or a little bit above, a little bit below, and then there's a thousand foot range in there for it. But I'll show you where you can adjust based off of that. And the reason I like to do that is sometimes appraisers are way too picky and what they choose, in my opinion, and they actually dial their search down too small. But, you know, depending upon what a house has, it may compare a little bit more to the 2,800 square foot house. And then you just, uh, you just adjust your price based off of uh, what that square footage is. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a second when we start to do the report. Um, but no, that's a great question. Yeah. <clears throat> but this would be about your, your 20% above and below range. Great question. All right, so as we go over here, <clears throat> you're gonna see right now it's because I've completed this, it's only showing selected, but this will show recently closed, closed or withdrawn or actives. You'll have one down here for actives as well. And it'll show the difference. So this one's your house, the little house, obviously. And it'll show you where the comps are in relation to it. And then you may know the area really well. You may see some comps over here and go, oh, that's a crappy area. I don't wanna pull from there. And so you want to stay within this one, okay? Because as you know, especially in in rural, you're obviously going to have to go out a lot further, okay? You're not you're not just going to be able to do that half mile radius <clears throat> that um, appraisers know. You may have to go out, you know, three, four, five miles to find some good comps. <clears throat> so here I'm going to hit search, and now this is where it shows everything. So squares are recently closed. Circle with the dot is pending uh, for sale and selected, okay? Selected is the ones that I have actually picked for my comp report. Now, these weren't a part of it when uh, we initially did it. So now we have one for sale, 389, uh, 360 recently closed, 350 is under contract. So ours is still one of the most expensive ones, 
but these are all internal properties and we were sitting on a creek and um and a preserve area so if you scroll down here what it's going to show is it's going to show recommended comps but then over here in the star is where you're going to have um, the ones that were used in that rvm estimate that i showed you on the front page and so if i like this comp it's in the 172 range it's close to our property it's a three two it closed pretty recently and it's 0.13 miles i just click right here and it adds it to my comp report. This one sold really cheap. So I might wanna do a little bit more research, see why it sold so cheap, but it's kind of easy to figure out because you look at it, these were all built in 1985, 88. This was built in 1954. So I'm gonna throw that one out because that one probably needs plumbing, electrical. Um, you can click on it really quick right here and see what it needs, or you can click right here It'll give you a quick summary of details if they did a decent job of filling it in. Um, or you click here and you see the listing, all right? So we're just gonna go with those three comps. And as you see, the houses just get older and older and older. Now, what I like to do also for um, a seller's report is I like to go in and see what's pending and what's active and how long it's been there. Cause that gives me an idea of how long things are staying on the market uh, based off of price. So this one's priced at 184 at 350, been on the market for 57 days, okay? It was used in the RVM. I'm not gonna add it to my comp list though. Um, I could because it's a higher price range. You can always call the agent and see if they'll tell you what the contract price is, but legally, they're probably not going to um, because if it falls through, now you know what the contract price is and what the seller will accept. Um, and then, uh, and then you have this one down here as well that's currently active. I can say, okay, this one's been on the market for 18 days at 389. It's very similar to your guys. So based off price per square footage, excuse me, oh my goodness, here's where we're gonna fall out, okay? <clears throat> so I hit update valuation and close. And now um, we come here, the average of the comps is still 401,000. Now, I want to make adjustments to my comps. I want to review my comps and see how they look, okay? So that's number three where you're going to make your comp analysis. And I'm going to hit the edit right here. Um, let me check the chat real quick, see how we're doing. Yeah, awesome, Frank. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man, um, I appreciate your insights on the investments. Um, let's see, Sherry, looks like a match on creation just value rather than adding the total price. Um, yeah, correct, Sherry. So it's an appraiser's adjusted values, as well as um, just kind of what those different improvements are based on the amount of um, the amount they're going to give you back on doing that improvement. If that makes sense. Um, how does it work with land lots? Um, iPhone, I don't know who that was, but it's the same thing. You're just going to pull the land and then when you're checking for your searches, Instead of doing residential or multifamily or condo, you block, you get rid of all those and then you just click land. Um, and that way you can find some land cops. Um, okay. I'm sorry to hear that, Edward. Yeah, express offers um, can be tough sometimes, especially um, they want to see pretty detailed info. All right. So here's where we get to the cops. So I have six comps for the property. I recommend no less than three, no more than six is kind of where I fall out um, so that you're at least getting a, a, a good average in there. Um, too many, sometimes you don't want to go all the way up to six depending upon what the range of them is. But here's my house. But here's a summary of it. So comp-based estimated value is 401, $170 per square foot. Falls right in there with where these comps are, okay? And then as I scroll down, <clears throat> I can go down and I can see how they compare, okay? You know, they all have two car garages, three, two, three, two, three, two, four, two, but it's a lot smaller. So they packed an extra bedroom into there. Also, you have to be careful. Sometime an agent will write a fourth bedroom, but it's a non-conforming bedroom. It's an office, something like that. And so that may not necessarily matter. Um, if you look at it, the lot sizes are all about the same. Um, dimensions, you know, this, this all kind of falls out. Here's where it can make a difference. And here's where I brought this one down. Exterior walls are brick. This one's partial brick and wood. This one's brick, all right? And so 
I'm going to bump this one down. And this is how does this property compare to the subject? So I bumped this one down a little bit because this one's vinyl siding. This one's all brick. All right. Probably bump it down a little bit more. But the reason I didn't is because this one had a much nicer interior. And what you can do is you can click on bigger photos and then these arrows right here. So you make the photos bigger. There's arrows right here. You can actually scroll through the listing photos of the house and see how it compares. So this one I did worse because it's wood paneling in the house, um, really nasty wallpaper in the bathrooms, you know, these oak bead, uh, baseboards, which no one likes anymore, oak doors, you know, it just needs a lot of upgrades. Um, <clears throat> so then I come down here and here's where I add the notes and I include them in my report so that the seller or the buyer can see them. And I put, this is why I reduce this property or I made this property nicer. So, you know, it didn't have a Florida room, it's vinyl siding, not brick, so on and so forth. And then it will show how much I adjusted the property based off that. Make sense? All right, and then I do that for the next three. <clears throat> so that does my adjustments. So now I hit update valuation and close. All right, and then review comp analysis. Based off my comp analysis, the results are 338 to 430, obviously a wide range, um, but $170 per square foot. $170 per square foot is exactly where we sold this or bought this house at. Um, <clears throat> and then actually it was 161, I'm sorry. This is where it's at now because it's been four or five months. So now once I'm all done, I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna hit create report, all right? When I hit create report, check the chat since I'm moving on to something new. I know I'm getting low on time here. Um, okay, cool. Rick found it. All right. Oh no, what'd I do here? Sorry. Whew, close one. All right, so this is going to give you a quick summary of what your front page is going to look like. And see where I said this really makes a seller pop because I get to see the photo that I took. This will be your photo, your name, your company, um, all of that. So this is where you go in and you're going to customize your report right here. So you're going to decide all the elements you want on the front page of your report. All right. I just keep everything. You can show page numbers if you want. Um, and then this is what it's going to look like with my profile. And so my picture, my name, my company, uh, phone numbers, and then my um, company logo, my email, and then my website. Okay. You can, and you just go edit profile right here if it's not right. Make sure it's right because this is pulling off your MLS. So if something's wrong on your MLS, then you need to adjust it there. Go up here. Um, <clears throat> this is where you're going to go in. You're going to see recent reports, and I'll probably just pull that one up. Um, since it's already done, but read some reports and then I'm going to scroll down here and here's all the different reports you can use because you can use this for marketing as well. Um, you can do a quick property flyer, which is one page property flyer is going to look like this. All right. And you can do this for like, this is great for open houses. So it's going to do estimated value, the name, you can do this to send out mailers to the neighborhood. You just sold a house. You want to send it and tell them all about this house. You know, you can remove this if you want. Um, you have a great picture. You have the description of the property. You have your business card right here. And you have a quick summary of the property. These are great for mailers and open houses. Um, you, select, you go down here. You select the photo you want to use for the front page. You type in your headline and then you type in your description. Um, you can suppress stuff that you want if you don't want the year bill or the tax amount, blah, 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 blah. And then um, property valuation to display. You can do estimated price, the list price, the sold price. You can go in and do all that, okay? Um, if you want to send it out in a mailer and you want to do individual ones and say, hey, here's a comp analysis um, or here's a sales comp of your value, um, send these to for sale by owners, send them to expires. You can do a mini property report, which is only 12 pages. But the one that I use is called, um, I do the property report up here. 
And then um, Patricia, you asked about templates. If you look, it keeps it the same every time because here's the things I put on there. Um, and it, it depends what I'm doing. So for a property report, this is what I use on my listing appointments, okay? So I show up with my listing appointments and instead of 28 pages, it's gonna have one, two, three, four, five. There's gonna be about seven to eight pages in that report, okay? And it'll include my notes as well. I take all this stuff out unless they're, they're like an engineer or something, they're a really analytical person and they wanna see housing stats and charts and neighborhood quality of life stats and the economic stats. I take all that stuff out of there because the person lives there, okay? They know what's happening in their neighborhood. Um, they know about their schools. They, um, uh, this sales and finance activity price change history is based off their stuff. But like I said, here's a nice thing. You can click over here and it'll show you what that's going to look like. Um, it'll show you what that portion of it's going to look like, okay? Um, they know you know, what their home facts are. They, you don't need these AARP livability index form. They don't need property photos of their own home, okay? They're just gonna have that one photo on the front page. So this is the one that I use for sellers. And it, it looks like this, you can go in, you can see a sample. This is gonna be their second page. So I like this one because this shows the current estimated value of the home based off of what I've done. Um, turn off this show. But here's all the different things that'll show you. You know, have pictures of the home. They've already seen that. And it's just going to go through. It's going to show histories of the property. All right. That's what I use for a seller report. You can send it to them ahead of time. Okay. If you want. And what you can do is get their email address from them. You include their name. You include a quick introduction and note. And then you put email to. I always have it CC'd to myself, like I said. So that way I can download it into the property folder. Um, or you can upload it now, display it as a PDF, print it, and um, take it to your listing appointment with you and download it that way. When you're all said and done, you've got everything ready to go, um, you just hit run report and it'll start producing it. So that's what I use. Property report is what I use for a seller's presentation. I take this with me, keep it in a folder for them, and they absolutely love it. Um, they're like, wow, this is amazing. Everybody just shows up and kind of talks or they like print out a couple of MLS documents of the comps they wanna use. This is very professional. You can put it inside of a folder or you can get those little, um, those little uh, paper reports like you use for college or high school reports and you um, put it in there so that this page right here has that clear page over top of it and it looks really nice and professional. Um, what I use for um, a buyer or a seller's report, sorry, a buyer's report is um, I'll go in and use this one as well. Um, so I'm sorry, the property report I do if I want a really quick summary, maybe for a buyer or seller, it just depends. Um, but the seller's report, and I really want to get in depth. And this is the one I use for um, if I need to challenge an appraisal. Like the last time I did this, I was challenging appraisal. I can show the actives. I can show the pendings. I can show the recent sold. And use this one for a um, seller or a buyer who's very analytical and really likes detail because this one has a ton of detail. Ton of detail. Obviously, Obviously if you use the full report, report, report 81, 81 pages. pages. So go through, look at these different arrows, see what the page looks like and if you want to use that page because it's all in what you want to present, right? Um, you can choose to have your comps on there. You can choose to have the recent market activity. Um, this is that seller, pro uh, pro um, seller proceeds page uh, that I talked about at the beginning. Um, here's the recommended pricing stat strategy with a refined value calculation based off of the notes we put in the beginning and then um, comp analysis calculation. And so it'll show all of that. I don't know why that one's unchecked on this. Um, so limit market activity. You wanna um, limit the number of properties. You want it to be four properties. Um, you can do side-by-side -side comparisons and individual property pages. Um, or you can do only home facts, okay? Uh, you wanna include your notes. You can suppress the value for a subject property. You can suppress the estimated value based off of comps or the refined value. If you don't want them to see one of those values because three values on the same page may screw them all up, 
you can get rid of it. Um, if you want to show them how each one compares, you can do that. All right. And there's a bunch of other things here. You can do neighborhood reports. You can do market activity reports. If you have a, somebody coming in from out of town and you want to show them a bunch of different schools, you can just do a school report for them. All right, real quick before I pull up this report, see if there are any more questions. Yep, exactly. Great point, Robert. Sometimes less is more. All right, so here's a report that I, I did. And this is, this is a um, investment I'm buying <clears throat> and I'm gonna flip. And so um, this is what I did the seller's report on. And I actually sent this to the listing agent because they had it listed at 209,000. I went and did a tour of the house, took a bunch of notes, came back, made this report. I offered 180,000. We ended up settling at 183. So everybody says you can't get a deal right now. If you show up prepared, um, you can get a deal. And so, you know, when I did my reports, and after I do 10,000 in upgrades to this house, because it, it just needs cosmetic stuff, pressure wash some landscaping up front, painted inside, ugly carpet replaced. Really, that's it. Um, and some panels on the fence fixed. You know, I'll have 30, 40,000 in equity in this house um, just based off of the, 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 what I did on this. So these are the notes that I had, just a quick summary. I said, I've pulled the current estimated value right around the purchase price, the adjusted value I have with the upgrades. I'm going to need to do a new roof, flooring, carpet, um, granite, appliances, fence repairs, pressure wash, um, paint and landscaping. Now, I don't have to do all that. A lot of it's cosmetic, but I wanna present my best foot forward when making an offer, okay? So the current estimated value of it was 176. Their list price was 209. My refined value was 191. Um, my comp analysis is 228. Now my refined value is with some upgrades on it, right? And then the comp analysis was based off of what everything's going in the area. Um, and that's actually gone up even since I did this. So this is gonna show the facts about the house, um, the extended facts. Here's the market values and how I adjusted because I wanted her to see, I wasn't just trying to screw them. I actually put my effort into it. And so I bumped it up from the market conditions. Um, the home's exterior was a little bit better than the other ones. It just needed a pressure wash, right? The interior was a little bit better, just needed you know, some new carpet, stuff like that. Lot size was bigger and then view and privacy were all the same. Now I come down here and this is where I show my 11,000 after I do my upgrades, right? So I'm gonna put a metal roof on it, a little bit of kitchen remodel, carpet, so on and so forth. So I'm showing the things I need to do and what it needs, okay? So it needs a new roof, it's gonna need all these things. So I wanted to show them that I'm gonna to have to put 7,000 in a roof and cosmetically and everything else, it needs about 11,000. I go down here, it's gonna show um, different, you know, uh, comps I use, market values, seller's reports. I wanted her to see some of the stats because this was to an agent. So I want to put these in front of her. Um, okay, sorry, I'm going through fast, but I wanted to show this because I'm running out of time. So here's a side-by-side -side report of all the comps. So she can, I can show her, hey, here's the comps I pulled. Here's what they look at. Right now, theirs is based at 205 a square foot. 201, 203, 212, 205, okay? But then it goes in, it shows each one of the comps in detail. They can obviously see that their comps are much nicer. These are brand new homes. I know the builder, um, they just putting these up. This one's a little more comparable. You know, it's vinyl siding. Well, obviously the price is a lot lower. So I showed them what the house could be and what the house is currently at, all right? And then, and then here's a nice thing. When you do a seller's report, it adds all these little things down here that you can do America's preferred home warranty, silver line tile and escrow, all those little things that we have in our EXP partnership stuff that we can use. So you can talk to them about that stuff as well. Here's some of the stuff we offer um, that we can do with it. And that's a report. Um, 
mine are different for each person based off of the person, how um, know them and what they're going to do. So um, what I'll do now, uh, I know that was really quick. Shit, I can't close it out. Sorry, I got all this crap in the way here. I don't know how to get back. There we go. All right. Hey, Matt, you've got a question in the chat from Daryl. All right. What you got? So it, it depends, Daryl. So I'll submit it with the offer if I'm making a lower offer. And what I do is I tell the, um, I tell the, the seller's agent, hey, here, uh, the, the offer that I'm making is not going to necessarily be the offer that you're expecting, but here's why I'm making that, that offer. And a lot of times the listing agent appreciates it because you have a stubborn seller, right? And so they've probably told that listing agent everything that I'm putting in the report. So getting it from another agent who wants to buy the house or who has a buyer who wants to buy a house is very helpful for them because they can put it in front of their seller and say, look, I think this is a good offer. I think you could accept it and here's why. And this house has some other little things that needed to be um, repaired on it. And that's why I showed them like, hey, yeah, it shows the values 191. I'm making the 183 offer and here's why, because it has like a pump grinder issue in the backyard. Um, there's a shitty, sorry, I forgot I'm being recorded. There's a, a crappy above ground pool that needs to be removed. And then that hole is going to be filled in. Like there's a lot of little things I could tell that agent of why I was making the offer. The seller saw it. She understood and we moved forward. So yes, I, I tend to submit these with the offer when I'm making a lower offer. Um, if it's, if the offer is contract price or above contract price, there's really no uh, reason to send this in with the offer. Hopefully that um, answers your question. Um, yeah, Patricia, um, hit me up on the sidebar. Um, really the investment report um, it is exactly the one I just showed. And so I can send I can send you an email. I can email you a copy of that so you can kind of see it and follow along. And um, Tiffany, I can actually email you a copy of that report I just showed if you'd like, and um, you can post it or send it out to everybody and, okay. and they can take a look at it or use it as an example and kind of adjust it. Let me make sure it's not terrible first, but. All right, any other questions? And so when I was saying um, you can do research or marketing, that's pretty much what I was doing here. Like you can do a bunch of different stuff here that I really haven't even gotten into, but you can do a property report for clients. You can search stuff on a map, like specifically on a map. Um, sorry, it's asking about surveys here. Um, this is where you create your reports that I just showed you. You create your CMA. Um, if you want CMA specific and not just reports, um, here's the investor analysis, Patricia, you were asking about, you can go here and you can actually do an investor analysis on properties. And so I can do 602 North main street, the one I just bought. And this is going to give you a little bit more information. Okay. And you're actually, um, going through and there's a program you can use. So you're showing everything just like we did, but there's a property analysis program called Valuate. You go in here, you do the training, um, and you actually have to, um, it takes you to an outside entity, uh, outside web page, but you actually can go in here and you can analyze whether or not this is good for a long-term hold, a flip, um, a quick load or a detail load. And so I'm going to actually use this one as a long-term hold and I initially was going to do it as a flip, but I decided I'm going to do it as a long-term hold. And what you'll do is you go in here, you adjust the purchase price, okay? Um, year one, effective gross revenue. Um, I'm going to charge $1,800 a month for it. I'm almost out of time, Tiff, sorry. Um, so that's twenty-one six. Operating expenses and reserves, a um, 1000 bucks a month. Annual growth, we'll just leave it at 3%, even though growth's been ridiculous lately. Um, but let's just say it continues to go. I mean, average people are having 50% increase in their in their value. But let's just say for this one, I want 10% growth. So this will grow 18,000 over the next year. 
All right, um, my fiscal year begins, we'll just do February, holding period 10 years, loan to value is 65% because I'm doing a hard money. Interest rate is actually gonna be 7%. Number of equity players is just me. So I submit that report and what it does is it goes in and creates a full chart. And I work with a lot of investors, so this is great to send them, but I can show them, um, I can show them my net cash flow over the next 10 years will be $504,000 on that. So it shows my equity multipliers. I know I'm getting like crazy into um, investment stuff right now. For some reason, this still has me as Keller Williams. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to bring that up. Um, but average cash on cash. So you'll get an investor who says they want their cash on cash to be you know 20% or whatever. And you're like, what the hell does that mean? You can go right here and you can show that to them. And you can ask them how long they want to hold this property. You can send them this report to show their net operating income, the cash flow before the debts, um, what their cap rate is, because everybody always says, I want at least an 8% cap rate. So you show them all this. And then send, it, send this report to your investor, along with the report you did on the property. Cool. Cool. All right, one more in the chat. Um, Connor, uh, your question, do you mean year one expenses by month or by year? You mean for uh, the rental or the investment properties? How'd you get to valuate, Matt? Um, okay, so to get to valuate, you you have to go under, um, uh, where'd I go? Uh, what just happened? Okay, to get an evaluate, you go to your uh, homepage here, you go to investor analysis. When you hit investor analysis, um, give me a second, delivering in. You go up here, put in your address, and then you're gonna go down here on the right, and you scroll down a page or two, and it's right here under additional resources. So it's right across from description and property facts. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's an amazing program. Like I used to I used to try and do that stuff and calculate it myself, um, but that way you get compounding interest. I mean, um, you get the internal, you get your um, return rates on there, you get your cap rates, you get your cash on cash. I mean. Everything an investor, because I do a lot um, through Ojo for investors and a couple other things. Um, and uh, um, um, and uh, um, they uh, and, and then you can sell them that full report. Great. Can I get can I give you a call maybe here in the next uh, couple of days? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, yeah, you can go to that site and uh, grab my number or I'll actually, um, I'll post it. Um, how do I do everyone? Okay, there we go. Um, I'll post it directly right now. Um, yeah, the best thing to do, guys, if you guys want to reach out to me, like I try and run a pretty strict schedule and I do mentoring as well. Um, so shoot me a text just to make sure I'm available to chat. And that way um, I'm not driving. I have four kids as well. I'm a single dad of four, so I'm running all over the damn place. Um, and so, um, just shoot me a text and that way we can, um, we can link up and that way I can have the program in front of me cause I don't have it all memorized, but I can have the program in front of me. That way I can answer your, your questions specifically, but I highly recommend going in here, playing around with it, creating some reports on properties around you, do your own house. Um, there's, there's videos you can watch that'll teach you on this. And, um, and, um, uh, yeah, you just go from there. If you click up here on learn. You can go through and it'll property details, how to price the property. You can click on top questions. These are the top questions right here. Um, how can I do X, Y, and Z? You know, um, more ways to learn, search for quick answers if you're trying to find something, or you can just go into help and they can guide you in the right direction. Oop. That's awesome. If you go Thank to marketing, you. Um, you can go to marketing. It'll show you how to prospect for residential clients, commercial, um, how to create a residential property flyer, different marketing tips that they recommend. Um, it, it's a very, very powerful program. And this is something you get with your MLS. Um, you could pay, 
thousands of dollars to marketing companies for this stuff or to, you know, to somebody to do this stuff for you. Uh, teacher, if you have an admin, teach your admin how to do this. Um, I'm, I'm about to hire an admin and I'm teaching her how to do this and how to do my KV core. I'm not going to even use her as a TC for the transactions because I can do that stuff really easy through Skyslope. I want her to go out and do my prospecting for me. You know what I mean? So there's something you can do with that. Hey, Matt, it's Robert. Yeah, with I think Nara, my headset sorry, might have been Nara, on. MLS, yeah, sorry. Um, my headset might have been on. Sorry if I was uh, noisy. You guys, I hope you muted me. Oh, we didn't hear anything, man. Oh, good. Yep. So Matt, you said you're going to teach your admin how to do RPR, and I'm sure that's going to be pretty more in detailed in detail training that you give her. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to like have a class and take a few of us on in that training with her? Yeah, um, yeah. I I mentor for ten percent. No, I'm just kidding. No, um, I, I got a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm always here for questions, guys. I mean, that's a that's the best part about this group. When I talk to people about um, uh, coming and uh, into the GPS group or being a part of ours is uh, I've learned, I was with Keller Williams for shoot three years. I've been in real estate four years. Yeah, I'm going in my fourth year. Um, I was with Keller Williams for the first, you know, two and a half, three years. And I learned more being a part of this group in the first couple months. And my numbers doubled once I came over to EXP and the GPS group. And so I just want people to do well and learn. I, yeah, just reach out to me and we can set up a private Zoom. Um, I try and do my training times between uh, 11 and one or 11 and two at the latest. Just that way I can do my prospecting and everything in the mornings. And then I coach high school sports. So I, I'm normally either doing showings or preparing for that in the afternoons. But yeah, no, if um, with her, it's going to be, it's going to be kind of jumping around and everything. Uh, but I, I'm more than willing, like, if you have questions, just, just shoot me a text and I'll jump on a zoom with you and, and we can spend 30 minutes, you know, just going through the program. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. There's no, any, not any other questions. I really appreciate everybody's time. Tiffany, thank you for having me on today. I really enjoy teaching and coaching. So anytime you guys have questions, please just use my number, reach out. Um, just don't ask me um, if I'm aware about my car's home warranty. All right. And, uh, and I'll respond to you. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. All right. Great job. Great, have a great day. Great job. You too. Thank you.